you think you're going to have some backlash from the NBA? So somebody asked me, is the name of the uh, podcast NBA Illuminati? I said, no, no, Basketball Illuminati, because I don't want any problems, any flack. So our first episode, we had a thing that we uncovered. This is 100% true. There was a game between the Spurs and the Kings in December where Buddy Heald hits a clear three-pointer from about 24 feet out. But for whatever reason, the ref called it a two. The replay center didn't fix it. And so the game ended basically uh, with that one less point for the Kings. Now, the Kings won by 10. You say, what does it matter? Mm -hmm. Buddy Heald has incentives in his contract for three-point percentage mm -hmm. and where he ranks in three-point makes for the season. So there's a scenario where, let's say he gets hurt or something, he's out 600 grand on that shot that probably should have counted but didn't. Now, you would think that someone would have caught it. They do a 48-minute report. They review everything mm -hmm. afterwards, right? That's what they tell us. They tell us it's not just the last two minutes. They're reviewing everything. So let me get this straight. The refs didn't see it. The people in the replay center didn't see it. The people doing the 48-minute review didn't see it. And by the way, here's how I know that happened. Because on the shot chart, if you go to NBA.com, the NBA.com shot chart has it moved to be a two-pointer, right? It's mm -hmm. actually scored. Uh -huh. You see it on the shot chart, make top of the key. But if you go to ESPN shot chart, it's the accurate one. So that means somebody said, boss, this is a three-pointer. Yeah, but they called it a two. Go ahead and move it there. Wow. So you ask, Ooh. is the NBA going to be pissed? I'm pretty sure they're not going to be happy that we're calling them out on things that they haven't fixed and they kind of brushed under the rug. Speaking of that, so when I first came in, I remember, you know, like, you, you know, locker room talk, and we talk about players' contracts, right? Like, oh, this guy has a free throw incentive in his contract. This person has this. So when you're trying, when you're sitting on the bench, you know, and you watching people's play, like, oh, yeah, you got a wide open layup, go take it. Like, yo, why you didn't take that, right? Ah. I'm already at my shooting percentage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't want to get fouled anymore. I don't want to. So now he's playing his game off of that incentive. So that let me know right now, never take incentive deals. Because, because now it's this. You don't control that. You think if you're, you're last place and you got a bonus, that if you average, seen this one before, you average 20 points a game, you average 20 points a game, you get an extra $3 million and they check you in that game, you think they're gonna allow you to play? No, they're gonna check you in, two minutes into it, sub out. Dip to 19.8, boom, no $3 million. That happens a lot with rookies that are qualifying offer. Mm -hmm. When you're a restricted free agent, there's a qualifying offer the team has to offer you in order to keep your restricted free agency rights, mm -hmm. right? Now, depending on how many games and how many minutes you played in that last season, that qualifying offer might be lower or might be higher. So a lot of times they're like, I'm not going to have to have $9 million tied up on this. Mm -hmm. So they will play around with the minutes. It, it's funny, like, it works in different ways. I remember uh, Grant Hill in Phoenix had a, a bonus he had to average, if he, he, a bonus from Nike, if he averaged 15 points or whatever it was for the season. And he was at, like, 14-9 or whatever. <laughs> so that last game, we literally just force-fed him. It, like, you know, Grant, Grant's a... I, high IQ guy, good yeah. shot guy. He shot like five of 30 that game. Because we were forced feeding him, just trying to get him to <laughs> however many points he needed to hit that incentive. My, it was my second year. So, you know, I'm on a two year deal. Yeah. So I'm on a two year deal. Minimum. Yeah, I'm two year minimum. Yeah. So the first, the, the first part of the season, you know, I'm averaging like 18, seven, and eight. No right. triple doubles, just, just statting it, yeah. right? We're winning. And then I remember our first televised game, we're playing against New Jersey. The game starts off 7-2 me. I got seven. Jason Kidd on national TV. Right. Four minutes in the game, I get subbed out. Right? So, you know, you get to the bench like, damn, what's this? what happened? It's like, man, you killing on TV, boy. <laughs> right? No, I know I am. Didn't get back into the game. Right. Coaching me at halftime. Finish where you left off. Like, you, at that point, I'm hot. Like, finish where I left off. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm mentally, I'm done. Right. And then I, I actually... Boycott of practice. Jason Richardson boycotted with me. And then that's where we both like got boycott. We boycotted. It was it was a big thing. Yeah. Found out that I was playing over my mid-level exception. So they were like, you you can't let him stay like this. So I remember I told um, coach, um, I said, listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing right now. 
that my points ain't stopping. All right? <laughs> you can play me as many minutes as you, you can play me four minutes. Whatever. I'm shooting the ball. I just stop passing these fools. I don't, I don't care about none of that. If I'm averaging 18, right. I'm averaging 18. I said, because at the end of the day, if you losing because you don't have me in, that's, that's on you. Right. They're going to fire you. But I'm, I'm doing what I'm going to do. And then at some point, he was like, you know what? It is about my do you. Like, all right. Um, at least we're on the same pitch, because I was like, I, I, I won't pass it. It's crazy. I mean, you got a rule named after you. Yeah. Like, isn't that but, crazy? Like, the <laughs> idea that we're not giving bags anymore, because Gil literally just. But well, no, it actually made things better for players. Because, but that's what I'm saying. Because though. at the time, at the time, it was like, I don't know how many of the viewers noticed, Gil killed, and the most they could offer him was a mid-level exception. Yep. Like and like, 22. you had two, you have Clippers and Wizards, right? Both offering. Uh, yeah. Like, like, like Clippers was like at 55, but we right. were still, it was so funny, it was still negotiating because it was with uncharted. Who? It was, everything was uncharted. With the Warriors you were still negotiating? Yes, because that's what I said, so. Well, <laughs> I, I could nice, like, ah, uh, yeah. I could have been Joe, I could have been Joe Smith, be honest. Right. Because they can only offer me like 42. Right. No, 49. No, yeah. 49 was the most. So uh, Denver came in, was like, um, 51. Right. I'm like. Two million more, yeah. like you know, yeah. and then Clippers went up to fifty-five. Right. Um, Washington was at fifty-five, and then they came up after that, right? Yeah. So Brian Russell opted out. Mid-level went up. Right. I mean, the, you know, yeah. the salary cap went up. So they was like, whatever we have, we're giving it to you. Like, all right. So, but I'm asking for the max at that point. Right. You know, I'm just asking. So Lamar Odom is waiting for me because he's number one. I'm right. two. So, like, we're sitting there trying to bounce off of each other. Warriors, I mean, you know, you there, they, I got the green light, I got this, you know, I got the, the Vipers and the Ferraris outside <laughs> waiting for me. I was supposed to sign for the four point, it was 4.9. Right. For that one year. Yeah. And then I had a contract under the so table. So you, oh, no, nah, man, you can, you know, you know the story with that, right? With the Joseph. Joseph, yeah. yeah. I, but you know, but you know, like, what actually happened. No. So they said, we'll do it, and then, allegedly, Joe's agent said, because the, the owner was so old, he said, yeah, this dude might croak, and then y'all ain't gonna off, uh, honor the deal. So that's why they put it in writing. Oh. That's how they got caught. If it was just a verbal kind of, we'll take care of you, nothing would've oh, happened. Same shit. <laughs> I'm, no, it was- You want it in writing? What? <laughs> so the contract was already gonna be signed, dated, oh, wow. everything. Like, and it was just gonna- A year later. It was gonna be in the safe, and I'm like- oh, We found it. Yeah. <laughs> but what, 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 what happened is, what the, the owner's there, and you know, he's pretending that he's not here. Right. So we're having a conversation like this, and he's off to the side, right? Like looking like this, right? And I'm like, I don't, like, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. I just went through battling with Right. Yeah. So I don't trust this whole thing. I want to be here. I want to be, you know, I want to be around my, you know, my right. teammates. I already done programmed them. They're they not getting the ball. So I already got, the program is already in, <laughs> you know what I mean? So from there, it was just, you know, seven, you know, I got 4.9, then I got, the deal was, it was a seven year, $79 million right. deal. So it was one year. One year and four, then you- 4.9 and then, then seven year, $79 million. Gotcha. And then once, once the math calculated from what Washington offered, that was a dumb deal for me. Right. You know what I mean? Because it'd have been like eight year, like 82, 83 yeah. million. I'm already getting six year, right. you know, 66. So it was like. I love bag talk. <laughs> I, so I, so I just I, hope to see a contract like that at some point <laughs> in my life. No, it, it's the wildest thing, man. Yeah. Some of these contracts, so, it's, it's just crazy how they get to where they get to. Allen Houston told a story about his deal. He was like one of the first $100 million guys, right? When he signed with the Knicks, right? So he was already on a, like a $56 million deal and he had to opt out. Uh -huh. He opted out. And uh, they just come off the Olympics, and so him and his agent, like game planning, what they're gonna offer, whatever, and da da da. And like they said, okay, they sat down and they were like, we're gonna, we're gonna start with 80, and then we'll probably end up at 73 or whatever. And he said they sat down, and the Knicks said 100 million. And they said, can I get that pen? <laughs> they didn't tell word. And so they sat down like word, okay. Yeah. No haggling, nothing. Like it was just a different time. And now you got guys like I said, Buddy Heald, where. Like, the amount of money he makes is significantly impacted by, like, his incentives. Which, you know, like... What's so funny is when Buddy Hill was... When his contract came up, right? And everybody was talking yeah. about it. And Buddy Hill is not happy. I DM'd Buddy Hill. Yeah. I DM'd him. And I said, 
hold on. I'm not telling you to take it. I'm not telling you to leave it. Don't be one of those players that get screwed by decision making. I said, you have your worth. You know what you're worth. Don't, don't, don't listen to nobody else. It's right. not about your agent. It's about your friends. What you're worth. So I said, then account for, I said, not your draft class. I said, you as an older player coming in. Right. So think about the age. So going back in. So, so now you're, you know, 25, 26. Mm -hmm. Think about everyone that's your age. Where are they at? Right? I said, right now, 25, 26, Beal, three time Beal. All Star. Yeah. You got Giannis. You got all the, that's your age group. Right. So, so now you have to look at, all right, you're averaging 22. You haven't made an All Star game. Who else is in that category? I said, CJ McCullough. Right. So I CJ, I said, this is CJ's contract. Right. You're right there. Right. So I said, so don't buck too much because I can tell you that I've seen it. You don't like that contract, and if you play the next year, they're going to bench your ass. Right. And mess that contract <laughs> yep. up. Now they're going to get the same player for cheaper. Right. So I said, this is supposed to be the happiest time of your life, bro. <laughs> so like, Take it. Look, use it. Like, play. And then sign a yeah. bigger one. Yep. I said, but... You know, this is supposed to be the happiest time. You shouldn't be stressed right now, bro. Nah. <laughs> it's, but it's great because there is no right answer. That's the thing. Like, people want there to be just a strategy you say this, but everyone's different in different situations. LeBron was doing that one plus ones. Uh -huh. And everyone's like, oh, everyone should do one plus ones. Like, no, That's not it. everyone. Because yeah. LeBron's got, like, two, you know, however many hundreds of millions in the bank. Mm -hmm. He can afford to let it ride because it's like, what's the, the downside is, okay, so I'm, I'm LeBron and I signed a one-year deal or two-year deal. Meanwhile, like, a guy like Kevin Love, mm -hmm. it's like, hell yeah, I'm taking the longest possible deal because mm -hmm. I need to guarantee this money. Like, he's not making the money off the court. So everybody's in a different situation, but I think you're right. The incentive thing, it leads to not basketball, right? It, whether it's the player changing the way he plays because mm -hmm. he's trying to hit his incentive or keep his incentive, or the team messing around with how often, we, like, ideally, we put these incentives because we want you to be that great. Yeah. So why would I say, whoa, whoa, whoa you, you're too great. <laughs> Hold on, that's going to cost me.